And then a follow-up, do you have a nickname internally with the Cowboys? What do the guys in the locker room call you? As far as guys call nicknames, I mean, I get eights. You know, that's pretty much about it. I think C.D. Lamb has answered front of the front of the podcast. Yeah. C.D. Lamb, by the way, we eights. We probably had a small role in that performance. We probably had a small role in that. You know, eights, my boy eights. Yes. You know, my buddy eights. CD Lamb to you guys, yes. but you know, yeah. eights, my, me and, uh, me and eights are tight. So I get my last year's ride or die, Jalen Hurts. I get this year's ride or die, I'm on Ross St. Brown. And then I get my best friend, eights. CD Lamb to the rest of you, but you know, I call him eights. Eights is his nickname? I never heard that before. <laughs> you haven't mentioned that. It's only him and uh, well, well, I call him eights. Oh, it's just his close know, friends call him eights. Yeah. Love, hate, pass catchers. They call him eights. According to his friends. According to his friends. Jane, according, I just to La- according to no, C.D. No. Lamb, they call him Eights. According to me, we all call him Eights. You guys call him C.D. Lamb. Yeah. You Pete, and Zach. It, it was nice that our producer Pete wasn't aware of that. Doesn't, he doesn't, it's weird. It, <laughs> Pete has this he amazing ability to produce the show without actually watching it. Yeah, he floats in and out. Yeah, <laughs> he really does. <laughs> busy man, Pete. <laughs> Pete Pete's yes. got a lot going I saw, on. When I walked in, I saw him running in a direction. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. He's busy. He's very fast. Yeah. <laughs> Black eights. I'll tell you who is Black really eights. fast. Exactly. CeeDee Lamb, who tops the love list here. Eight. Eight. Mm. Yeah. I just, I, it's, you know, you got to be no, close to No, no, you're not friends with him, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want yeah. to yeah. be a poser here. Yeah, I understand. I, wanna, I appreciate uh, that. Proper name, <laughs> CeeDee Lamb. Matthew, your friend has the 49ers on tap, and for that, he still checks in as a top 10 wide receiver this week. I actually have it wide receiver eight. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing a bit at this point. Yeah. 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 Go on, Matthew. The fact of the matter, I, I am, but it's also, it's easy to love him, right? I mean, people, I think, are probably concerned about the 49ers, and I get that. What a great game that'll be on Sunday night right here at NBC and Peacock. I'm a company man. The fact of the matter is, is that the Niners, as good as that defense is, they've actually allowed the third most receptions to opposing wide receivers this season. Like, teams are throwing on them successfully. And wide receivers that have seen at least seven targets against the Niners this year are averaging over 18 fantasy points per game. You think about last year, that playoff loss to San Francisco, where uh, Dak ran, what are we doing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> then they have Ezekiel Elliott like as a center or something uh, like that. The whole thing was a disaster, <laughs> except for C.D. Lamb who went 10 for 117 on 13 targets against the Niners last year as well. So, CeeDee Lamb, to me, I think he'll be the focal point of offense. I think it's going to be tough for them to run the ball. They'll try to, but it'll be tough for them to run the ball. So, give me CeeDee Lamb as a love this week. I'm at wide receiver eight, even though he's playing the Niners. Yeah, I think a couple of things. One, Dallas will probably have to throw in this game for like one of the first times ever. Dallas have had such a weird season where three games they've combined to blow out teams 108 to 13. And then their other game, they lost by double digits to the Cardinals. Right, they haven't had so it's just been, it's just been strange. And that's why Ceddy Lamb, he's only top seven targets in one game so far this season. That's not going to continue. He will get more targets as we go. They're not going to blow out the Niners. Where, I mean, the game, the, the, you know, the games like the, Gi- the the Giants game, you know, or you know, last week as well. They're just, they're not going to like just blow it out so they don't have to throw. Yes. they're not going to do that to the Niners. Yep, agreed. Our next one here, Michael Pittman against the Titans, guys. We have this conversation every single week. The Titans secondary really, really struggling. That theory didn't work so well for our hopes, my hopes, that the Bengals would tear them up. But for Anthony Richardson connection to Michael Pittman this week, Jay, you still have to be high on Pittman, and Barry is. He has him as wide receiver 16 this week. Yeah, not a good week for Michael Pittman last week, right. but the three weeks prior, he top 30 targets. He was looking like a true wide receiver one. I would fully expect him to get back to that against the Titans team that, yes, had a good week, but one week doesn't make a unit, and they've been pretty bad all of last season and this season prior. You mentioned the targets. Every wide receiver that's seen at least six targets against the Titans this year is averaging 17 points. Two fantasy points per game. 11 targets in every game prior to last week, as you mentioned, Jay. Uh, the, um, uh, you know, the, the massive target share that he's getting. Titans allow the third highest catch rate to wide receivers. Like, pick a stat, any stat, and they're bad against the pass. Even though the Bengals did nothing to him, they're still a top 10 team in terms of most passing yards allowed through four weeks of the season. So, yeah. Pittman's a, you know, locked in wide receiver two for me this week. Jay, if I told you Matthew has Adam Thielen as a top 20 wide receiver play this week, you would say? Well, I'll tell you what I'll say. I'll, I'll give you some names. Here are some names. Amon Ra St. Brown, Devontae Smith, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, all have less fantasy points on the season than the great Adam Thielen. I mean, look, in that offense, he's, he's all they've got at the moment. He's just getting a ton of targets. Mm. And I think he's just shown that he has a little bit more juice in the tank than anyone thought. Like, he's playing well, and he's providing an outlet, be it Dalton or Bryce Young, and I think that should continue in a game that they're going to have to throw as double-digit dogs. Old guys with a little bit more juice in the tank than people thought. Yeah. 
We all stick together. So Adam Thielen makes the love list as well. Last three weeks, to your point about that's all they have, Jay, 26% target share for this guy. Yeah. 26% target share. Um, he's had at least seven receptions in every one of those games as well. Lions allow the fourth most yards to the slot this season, which is obviously where Thielen gets the majority of his work. 70% of his targets have come from the slot so far this year. So Adam Thielen in a, not a revenge game, but, you know, a familiar foe, obviously, with the NFC North. He spent a lot of years in Minnesota playing against the Lions. He's a friend of the podcast. Top 20 play this week. Makes the love list. Old guys got to stick together. Let's go, Adam Thielen. <laughs> Let's go, Adam. Last pass catcher on the love list here, Barry. Tyler Higby. Slow yeah. start to the season for him, but he's really picked it up the last two weeks. And surprisingly, Philadelphia is a good matchup for tight ends. Death taxes start your tight end against the Eagles. It's literally that. It's literally that simple. They they allow the third most fantasy points to tight ends this season. Every year they're bad against tight ends. It's how they it's how they do their defense. It's a kind of way what they emphasize and what they don't emphasize. He's had an over 22% target share the last two weeks as well for Higby. And I know you might be concerned a little bit, and I am a little bit in terms of the target share because Cooper Cup's coming back and you've got to feed Puka Nakua. But I do feel like it's just such a good matchup, and tight end is such a just brutal position. Higby makes my top 10 this week and as a love. Yeah, pass catcher paradise in that Matthew Stafford already throws a ton. He's going to probably have to throw a ton to keep pace uh, with the Eagles, and the Eagles haven't been a great pass defense so Mm-mm. far. Some others receiving votes here. Christian Kirk, of course, in the Buffalo, uh, playing Buffalo, but in London. Romeo Dobbs against the Raiders. Rasheed Rice against the Vikings. Wondell Robinson, who got a ton of quick game targets uh, on Monday night. He has Miami on deck. Zach Ertz has been a target monster this week. He's got the this year. He's got the Bengals. And then that last one there, Jay, Jonu Smith. Not Kyle Pitts, uh, John o. Smith, the tight end you want to start out of the Falcons offense. It's going to be a referendum game for Desmond Ritter as well. Probably even more so than Sam Howell. Because Sam Howell will start next week, whatever happens. Desmond Ritter may not get out of that game. It's Desmond Ritter may not start the second half, but three straight games with at least 20% target share for John o. Smith against the Texans as well. Real quickly, a couple ones I want to mention. Rashi Rice, again, we've talked about him on the Sunday show a few times as well. One of my favorite bench stashes as well. Rice leads all Kansas City wide receivers in slot targets. Vikings allow the most receptions to the slot this year. They're tied for the most as well. So Rasheed Rice is just earning targets at a, at a high rate. He's just not out there much, but his snap rate is I- improving every single week. He's got the second highest rate of uh, being targeted on his routes of all wide receivers that have at least 15 targets so far this year. So just a bunch of nerdy underlying metrics to let you know, like, Rasheed Rice is coming. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. Get on the bandwagon before it happens there. Kirk depends on Zay Jones as well. But again, Buffalo allows an 80% catch rate to the slot. We know Kirk runs most of his routes there. Yep, going to have to be throwing a lot too. Moving over to the hate list, which is led by Cortland Sutton. He's got the Jets. The Broncos are at home, but we know this game's personal between the two teams. While DJ Reed is in concussion protocol right now, Salah did sound oddly optimistical play. The more important thing in this one, Barry, is Sauce Gardner was very good against this Broncos pass offense last year, and Sauce Gardner is still really good this year. Jets have allowed one touchdown to a wide receiver through four games. I mean, you know, they just faced the Stephon Diggs. Right. right. I mean, exactly. Yeah. They've, they've faced some really good offenses so far this year, and they have been really good uh, defensively. You know, when um, – oh. 43% of Sutton's fantasy points this season have come on touchdowns. So, again, if he doesn't score, it's unlikely for him to have a big game. I would improve his outlook, obviously, if DJ Reed can't go as well. But if he if he's back, I mean, again, so far this year, the Jets have allowed the third fewest fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Sutton and Judy, you downgrade the entire passing offense there. How about this next one, Jay? Drake London, who, yes, caught the touchdown in London. But the bottom line is you can't trust Desmond Ritter uh, to throw in this offense right now. No. Well, here's the good thing with Drake London. Eight targets, six targets, seven targets the past three weeks. That's not amazing, but that's good enough for him to provide value if not for the bad news, which is that right now he's probably got the worst starting quarterback in the NFL throwing him the ball. And look, it's just at the point now where Ritter... Look, Ritter did show signs in the second half, but it was when the game was already out of hand because he'd put it out of hand. And so, yeah, I think there is a decent chance that Taylor Heine he's throwing Drake London the ball uh, in the second half. All right, we talked about this. The Jets have only allowed one touchdown to a wide receiver through four games. Houston has also only allowed one touchdown to a wide receiver this season as well. Drake London, if he doesn't score a touchdown, he's going to be mostly useless. I think he's going to be mostly useless in this game. Someone you're usually more bullish on, Matthew, Gabe Davis yeah. makes the hate list. Wide receiver 37 this week, and we know that tough travel all the way to London to play Jacksonville. 
He's had only one game this year with more than three receptions. He's been very touchdown dependent. Three touchdown catches this season have accounted for 49% of his fantasy points. He's only got a 12% target share as well. Don't actually love the matchup here against the Jags. So because he's so touchdown dependent, as we, we've talked about this again, yep. that we, we actually like the Jags to hang tough in this game. So uh, I just don't like Gabe Davis's chances to get in the end zone this week. And so he makes the hate list. Sneakily, people aren't really focusing on this because the offense has been the story with Jacksonville, but Tyson Campbell and Darius Williams are playing Correct. an extremely high level at the moment at corner. Yes. Campbell's one of the best corners in the NFL right yep. now that no one talks about. Yep. So I'm, I'm with you all the way yeah. on Gabe Davis D there. I mean, and Diggs is going to get his. So it's yep. just like, I don't know. Nervous about Gabe Davis this week. Last pass catcher on the hate list, Jay, Cole Komet, who plays tonight at Washington. We know this offense, you can't always trust the Bears to throw. And the bottom line is, Cole Komet, his production so far might be a little fluky as well. Why don't you like Cole Komet tonight, Matthew? He's seven seven receptions on nine targets for 85 yards and two touchdowns last game. That Both of his touchdowns last week came on busted coverage. Commanders have allowed the fewest, uh, fewest fantasy points to opposing tight ends this season. So... Okay. Uh, it feels like they've discovered something. It, there's more of a connection between Fields and DJ Moore this way. So, um, Komet is going to be on my Kabetch okay. this cool. week. That's yeah. the one right yeah. there. Three out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.